In today's video, I'll be talking about navigating the process of change with yourself and with your doctor. Hello and welcome. We all have had experiences where our doctor counsels us on a sensitive subject, usually around an unhealthy habit or relationship. While the doctor means well, if they are not meeting you where you are in your change journey, it is likely going to feel uncomfortable to you. These conversations can make you feel like a failure, which isn't at all what the doctor wants to do. They are trying to motivate you to make the necessary changes to improve your health. They're just going about it in the wrong way. Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa Boyce, the founder of Mindful Next Chapters. I am a board certified hospice and palliative care provider with over 40 years of medical experience. If any of this information is something you are interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so that you can be the first to know as we produce new videos. I want to propose a shift in how these conversations go. Unfortunately, it will likely need to be you who guides your doctor on how to best help. You should feel comfortable about sharing where you are currently in terms of your lifestyle with your doctor. Doctors are generally not judgmental about these sensitive things. They have seen countless people with the same struggles and may have or be struggling with the same issues themselves. When you are struggling with overeating, addictions, or unhealthy relationships, it can feel like you are all alone. Your doctor sincerely wants to help you. When the doctor doesn't know where you are in the change process, their approach can miss the mark, to say the least. An example of this is when you are not in a place, physically or mentally, to make any changes. Your life might be already overwhelming, and you don't have the energy or bandwidth it takes to address these health issues. If this is where you are, it isn't helpful for the doctor to talk to you about the changes that you need to make and how to make them. When you understand the stages of change and have identified which stage you are in, you can partner with your doctor to formulate a plan that is specific to where you are in the change process. The first stage is when you haven't even recognized there's a problem. You are just living your life and the problem sneaks up on you. Over time, the habit can become more problematic and begin having negative effects on your health. This is the pre-contemplation phase. In this stage, it is natural to minimize or deny there is a problem. If this is where you are, it can feel confrontational when your doctor brings up the problem. Here are some responses that you can express when the doctor brings these things up and you are in the pre-contemplation phase. Say thank you for calling this to my attention. I haven't really given it much thought, but I will now. While I am going to give this more thought, I'm not sure I'm in a place where I can give this important matter the attention that it needs. When you are in the pre-contemplation stage, your goal is to nudge yourself out of that. This can be done by simply watching the behavior. Don't make any attempt to modify it when you're in this stage because you'll likely fail. The more failure you experience, the less likely you will try again. Here are some things to watch for. Was there a trigger in your life that started this habit? Examples might be a job change, marriage, divorce, or other losses. When and how do you engage in the unhealthy habit? Look at timing, triggers, frequency, locations, and people that engage in or enable your unhealthy habit. 
Where are you emotionally before and after engaging in the habit? Make mental notes and document what you observe. At your next doctor appointment, share what you have noticed. Discuss with them what you have observed and learned about any impact you have observed in terms of how this habit has affected your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Ask your provider for information about the impact this behavior might be having on your health. The goal of this practice is for you to see the habit for what it is. By knowing the hold the habit has on you and the negative effects it brings to your life, you can begin to move to the next step in the change process. When you have been thinking about changing the habit, you have moved from pre-contemplation to contemplation. Great work! This is the most significant step in the change process. This stage is when you are seriously aware of the negative effects and are starting to be motivated towards addressing the issue. The risk in this stage is you can become too harsh on yourself. Don't let this happen to you. It can lead to negative self-talk that can sabotage your progress. Focus on giving yourself grace, compassion, and understanding. Don't fall into the helpless victim mentality. The thing to do in this stage is to learn all you can. Explore resources available. They may be medical, social, community, classes, books, articles, and more. Learn everything you can about the subject of how to tackle this problem. Some examples might be prescriptions for tobacco withdrawal, alcoholics or narcotics anonymous meetings, consultation with a dietitian, Weight Watchers, or individual or couples therapy. When you are in the contemplation phase, share with your doctor what you have been thinking and what resources you have identified. Ask them their opinion on the efficacy of these resources and ask them if there are some other things you might want to learn more about. The more you look into the resources, the higher the chances of moving to the next phase of change. The action phase of change is when you use all of the things you learned in the previous two phases to plan and execute the needed changes. The things to focus on now are make a list of every possible action that you feel might be helpful. Make it as broad and comprehensive as you can. Include everything, even if it's something you are not ready for yet. As time goes on, you might find that these are things that you become ready for. Begin implementing any steps you can in small ways. Incorporate these bite-sized changes into the day-to-day -day life. Take note and celebrate any and all wins you have. When you feel that these small steps have become ingrained, then take on another small action. Repeat this process and share your progress with others. When you visit your doctor while you are in this phase, share what has and has not worked for you. Ask for any suggestions to remove barriers to your success. Celebrate with your doctor. They love hearing about your success. In addition, what they learn from your process will increase their knowledge that they can then share with other patients. The next step is sad, but it's likely to occur. The more that you are aware of this, the better you will be at overcoming it. This is the relapse phase. The first thing is for you not to berate yourself. Remember that this is an inevitable step and remind yourself that you have the knowledge and resources to overcome it. In this stage, look at if the slip happened slowly over time or was it sudden. If it occurred over time, then go back to watching and observing your behaviors and re-explore your action plans. 
See which action would best address the slips you are experiencing. If it was a sudden relapse, explore what was going on in your life when your slip started. Usually it's related to a life situation that either triggered some of the emotions that led to the habit or that distract you from your action plan. Address these things as best you can while re-engaging in watching the habit and exploring the action plan. This process is not an all or none proposition. That is why it can be so successful. A patient of mine who struggled with tobacco addiction described it as wash, rinse, and repeat, which I feel is a great analogy. Take each step one at a time. Don't rush spend as much time as you need in each phase. This time will ensure your future success in the next phase. Thank you for joining me in this video. I hope that it inspires you and improves your relationship with your doctor. As always, I appreciate your likes and shares. Thank you and God bless.